covert narcissists are tricky to spot. When a narcissistic person mixes the good and the bad and makes you believe or sets a narrative, let's put it that way, where the good is all you're supposed to see and the toxic stuff is completely swept under the rug and ignored and in fact isn't even happening it's all in your head or something like that right so let's talk about that they don't always have these obvious signs these obvious red flags i do have a video on red flags for covert narcissism which maybe you'll find useful and i will link it there somewhere <laughs> and so you can find it i'm lisa colucci i'm a life coach that helps you to understand everything related to narcissism to recovering from toxic relationships if you have not done so hit subscribe hit the thumbs up they will blend the good and bad the happy the sad the the positive the negative of what they're doing so basically they will blend a normal healthy relationship with a toxic one seamlessly it will feel like they're being really loving and that they genuinely love and care about you in a way that is healthy and then you see that everything is self-directed everything is self just self right for them and that they're loving you means they love what you do for them they love the things you say to them they love the way they make you make them look they love you know what i'm talking about here right they love transactionally and the thing is they have all the right words they even sometimes have understanding and awareness of psychology you will find them in this niche of people trying to quote help people right taking and seeking supply from others while they're giving information about the very thing they do okay so you will see it in 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 so many areas in life how do you know what it is well you don't until you have an interaction over and over and over not one interaction multiple interactions patterns of interactions that show that toxic behavior that that bring out the things that we know to be narcissistic traits. So, so here's some example of what I'm talking about. They might love and support you in some areas of your life and then weaponize that thing they loved and supported you about later on, throw it in your face. They might be proud of you and loving of you. And then the thing that you did that they were proud of, they might say, see, you'd always do this. You always do that. You know, your, your attention's over there. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. And, and really tear the thing down at the same time as they're supporting you. It can be confusing because you're like, which one's real? They obviously aren't being negative about this thing. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yes, they were. No, they weren't. Maybe I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? How should I have done it different? Another thing they might do is lead you down the trail of exposing yourself in vulnerable ways to them, being emotionally there, be emotionally vulnerable, connecting deeply with them. And then they will take that and use it against you. Again, weaponizing your vulnerability to then hurt you and manipulate situations they will gaslight you in the most interesting way where they will be devaluing you while it seems like valuing it's very backhanded it isn't actual valuation it is a devaluing that seems like praise so one form of that would be they will praise and give attention for a thing and then devalue it and criticize you at the same time, making the taking away any value that they had in the valuing of the thing, right? So basically they're always trying to control the narrative. They're always trying to control and stay on top and be powerful in charge and protect and block their own vulnerabilities from anyone else seeing them. So this whole thing with covert narcissism and, and the way they do this will make you often feel completely confused and conflicted. You will feel like, but they're my best friend, but they love me, but they care for me. And at the same time, I can't trust them. They're not really being a friend. They hurt me more than anyone in the world. It's so hard to unwind for people that they almost can't see the toxic situation that they're in. They almost can't put a finger on what's toxic about it. With a covert narcissist, especially deeply covert narcissists and ones that are incredibly altruistic in their life, 
it can feel almost impossible and almost like you're blaming someone for something that isn't happening when you know it's happening. You start to self gaslight a lot when you're around this type of narcissistic person. One of the biggest things in this particular type of narcissist is they have to be the good guy. They will set things up and create situations and set up the narratives ahead of time to make themselves the good guy. In fact, they'll bait you into an argument. They will, they will gaslight you, shut down, not respond, be toxic, right? And then when you finally react, they will act calm and peaceful. Oh, honey, what's the matter? What? Do, why are you so upset? Whatever. And make you look like you're completely nuts. Like you're just someone that's explosive and crazy. And it reinforces their ego belief that they are the good one. They're a good person. They're the good guy. I think that this type of narcissist cannot see themselves as anything other than the good guy. They're terrified of having a normal dynamic personality where some of the things about us aren't great. No, that can't be okay with them. They need to be seen, approved of, appreciated, and over the top amount of supply going toward how amazingly good they are. So that's it for today. I am Lise Clucci again, and if you need anything regarding help with narcissistic or toxic relationships or you are healing from something like this and you need coaching look for the information in the main description of each video there's also info on the group coaching as well as peer support and i will see you guys next time take care